वेलकम व्यूअर्स टुडे वी हैव चैप्टर ऑन वाटर मैनेजमेंट इन एग्रीकल्चर सो इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ वाटर इज वेल नाउन टू एवरी वन एंड एज फॉर एज एग्रीकल्चर इज कंसर्न इट इज द की इनपुट फॉर दी सस्टेनेबल एग्रीकल्चर इफ वी आर एबल टू मैनेज दी वाटर प्रॉपरली वी कैन सी द फ्यूचर ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एंड वी कैन सस्टेन दी अवर एग्रीकल्चर प्रोडक्शन so we see the water budget of india then we have the total geographical area of 328 million hectare and annual rainfall of 1194 mm so if we multiply total geographical area with uh, annual rainfall it comes around 392 million hectare meter and some contribution from sun of all that is around 8 million hectare meter so total it comes uh, around 400 million hectare meter of precipitation of india so out of 400 million hectare meter 300 million hectare meter comes uh, during the monsoon season and 100 million hectare meter comes rest of the year uh, if we see the budget of this uh, 400 million hectare meter precipitation then 70 million hectare meter directly lost through the process called evaporation and 115 million hectare meter is flows as the surface runoff and 215 million hectare meter is soaked into the soil as the infiltration water management chapter we can discuss in three main headings rain water management ground water management and irrigation management so let us start with the rain water management rain water management is extremely important because rain is the primary source of water and the major portion of the annual rainfall is received in some 100 hours of down pour of short monsoon duration which providing very little time for natural recharging of aquifer and inevitably causes runoff loss during monsoon period and water scarcity during long monsoon period so as we see in, in the water budget that out of 400 million hectare meter 300 million hectare meter is received in short span of 3 months of monsoon the rest of the year there is no rainfall so during that period if we are manage that water collect and conserve then rest of the period we can uh, use that collected and conserved water so rain water management comprise mainly conservation of rain water to the extent feasible and reduction of runoff losses so there are many practices to conserve and collect the rain water and in the field we can directly conserve the water that is called the in situ water conservation so there are many practices some popular practices are like summer tillage if uh, we plow the field during summer before the monsoon the soil is loosened and whole amount of water is absorbed by the soil so maximum quantity of water is retained by the soil which will be used for the production of crop likewise if we prepared whole field into small compartments and the bund the compart so the east compart is uh, is absorbed with the water and likewise whole field is retained with the water this water can be utilized for the production of crops likewise if for horticulture crop uh, around the trees we make small casemates this small basin that is for maximum uh, store of water in the root zone area water can store maximum here root zone area and it is not going out so moisture conservation in root zone is maintained likewise we have deep furrow in between the normal furrow we after 6 to 8 normal furrow we make the deep furrow so deep furrow acts as a drainage also and also access water from the, this area it comes to deep furrow and it holding the water and it connected to the main channel so the water is collected to the uh, uh, collection center or it is also um, conserved in the field area in slopy lands we have different methods and different practices to conserve the moisture like contour munding contour is nothing but outline of uh, equal elevation suppose this slopy land is there and we make uh, a line from the equal mean sea level that is contour and along with this contour if we make the bund it is the contour munding so making the contour munding the flow of water is reduced uh, it is uh, mainly conserved in the field area so this practice is in slopy area is uh, uh, helping to conserve water in situ likewise if we we are not able to level the slopy area but a small portion if we level by excavating the soil from the upper level and uh, pouring into the down slope 
it makes small terraces. So, it terraces along the contour makes the flow of water slow and the whole water uh, speed is reduced and runoff reduced and water is conserved in the field area. If bunds are along a contour, the bund is contour bund and the terrace is contour terrace whereas cultivation is practice. This is the terrace area, this is the contour bund area and if bund is constructed between the two contours, suppose two contours are there and in between bunds are created, it is called the graded bund. So, graded bund is uh, mainly practices where rainfall amount is more and that uh, soil is uh, type that percolation is very slow. So, for stagnation of water uh, more uh, bunds are given so that water can percolate into the soil. So, if bunds is constructed between the two contour, it is the graded bund and the terrace is the graded tire. Likewise, if we across the slope, we make the trenches which can hold the water flowing from the upper slope to down slope and it can flow to a main channel and can collect to a place, it is the called the contour trenching. So, these are the practices followed mainly in the slopey area. Semicircular bunds around the tree can hold the water in the root zone and conserve in the root zone area. Likewise, we can make the ridge and furrow. This is the ridge and this furrow. If we tied this uh, ridge, two ridge, if we tied, it make small trenches and water is conserved in between the trenches. So, it is called the tide ridging. It is practiced mainly in dry land area where moisture is shortage. Cutting is another practice and mainly it is uh, popular in western Rajasthan where uh, long bund is uh, made in the, in the area of slopey and the water is uh, collected here. This water is used for the farmland and one uh, small dug well is also uh, prepared. So, it is also resired and after the uh, soil saturated soil, uh, after the water is finished and soil is saturated that is used for the growing the next season crop. Likewise, we have ponds for restoring water from the adjoining natural catchment during the rainy season. We have dam for the collection of water. Jowad is another structure that is made earthen check dam that capture and conserve rain water improving the percolation and ground water research. Tanka or water tank mainly uh, it is uh, uh, famous in western Rajasthan and used in storing the water, uh, rain water and used mainly for the drinking also some vegetable cultivation. We can also check the evaporation by the practice called mulching. Mulching is nothing but the covering the soil either by extra or by the polythene. So, moisture in the form of vapor is checked uh, and it um, more moisture is conserved in the soil. So, mulching can also help the conserve the water. Likewise, if we cover the soil by growing the cover crop like legumes, cowpea and green gram that is uh, due to more biomass maximum cover is there. So, raindrop directly does not hit the soil and erosion is reduced and runoff is reduced. And if we grow the vegetation on the buns, it will check the flow of water and also conserve the moisture in the field itself. So, these are the practices to conserve the water in situ. Now, we come to the groundwater management. In groundwater management, we mainly concerned with the quality of water. So, let us see how quality is assessed and how it is managed. So, for researching the groundwater, uh, earlier we discussed many practices for the conservation of water in situ that also adds to the research of groundwater. And in addition to that uh, practices, we have the percolation tanks. So, percolation tanks uh, from bottom it is not uh, cemented, so water is more percolated inside the soil. And like unused dug, unused wells, uh, if we direct the uh, water to move into the this unused well, it also adds to the resurging of the groundwater. Likewise, we make the subsurface dams. These are built underground and that intercept surface flow in the river beds. They serve both to resurge and increase the water table in the area. Groundwater quality is mainly judged with the total salt concentration that is uh, electricity conductivity and sodium absorption ratio 
residual sodium carbonate, boron content and chloride content. These are the parameter with which water quality is judged. SAR is calculated by sodium ion divided by under root of calcium plus magnesium divided by 2. This is a formula used for the calculation of SAR and residual sodium carbonate is nothing but the sum of uh, bicarbonate plus carbonate minus sum of calcium plus magnesium. So, it is calculated. Now, we see the different categories of salt concentration. So, EC less than 1.5 is normal water and suitable for all soils, but more than 10 it is highly saline and not suitable for the cultivation. Likewise, boron content less than 3 is normal for all soils and more than 10 ppm it is high and not suitable for the cultivation. Chloride concentration up to 2 ppm is safe and we can use, but more than 8 ppm it is uh, not uh, suitable and more hazards is there. Sodium absorption ratio less than 10 is low and when and it can be safely used for the cultivation of crops. RSC value less than 1.25 is suitable for irrigation and more than 2.5 is not suitable. Now, how we can manage this the poor quality water? There are many practices, some important are like we can improve the adding amendments such as sulfuric acid, gypsum or pyrites which can be mixed with water or can be applied to soil where poor quality water containing high concentration of sodium salt is used. Mainly the sodium is dangerous and harmful than the other salts. So, we have to replace the sodium by other salt like calcium or magnesium. So, about 4.1 ton of gypsum per hectare for 30 centimeter depth soil is required for each milli equivalent of sodium to be replaced by calcium. Application of FIM farmyard manure and green manure helps in reducing adverse effect of poor quality water by improving permeability of soils. Application of fertilizer especially nitrogen, phosphorus and zinc is essential because these fertilizers are more prone to the um, soil and fixed in the, the soil. Planting seeds on the side of the ridge helps in better germination than those planted on the top of the ridge. Growing of salt tolerant crops and variety is the best alternative. Some of the crops are listed here for total salt, barley, sugar beet, date palm, mustard, cotton, turnip, beetroot, coconut, rhodus grass, sesbania are the tolerant species and for boron, date palm, sugar beet, lucerne, onion, turnip, cabbage, carrot and lettuce are tolerant species. So, we should prefer these species for the growing in the this area. Now, we come to the irrigation management. So, irrigation is artificial application of water to the land in accordance with crop water requirement during the life cycle of the crop. Irrigation management is the integrated process of intake, conveyance, regulation, measurement, distribution and application of water for crop production. The judicious and scientific management of irrigation water involves understanding the whole process of soil water plant continuum system before executing management of irrigation. This means before managing irrigation we have to understand how water enters into the soil and how it is moved in the soil and how it is lost in the soil and then how plant uptake and then ultimately it is lost through the plant system. So, understanding this whole soil water plant continuum system, it can add to better management of water. So, the amount of water to be applied when and how best to apply without any adverse effect on the environment requires knowledge of soil water plant relationship. Therefore, these relationship have been explained briefly before the management part. So, we start with the soil water and how it is held and at what state it is called at what constant it is in the different energy states it is called in the soil. We start suppose irrigation is there and or rainfall occurs. So, whole soil pores are filled with the water all micro and macro pores are filled with the water and uh, plenty of water is there. This situation is called the uh, saturation stage and the tension of soil is 0 bar, no tension is there. But this water is uh, not uh, holding in the soil 
and under the influence of gravitational it is drain out of the soil pores so it is called the gravitational water again after the 2 to 3 days of irrigation of rainfall the moisture is lost and one stage is comes that is called field capacity and the soil water tension at this stage is 0.3 bar so between saturation and field capacity water is held called gravitational water. After that again soil moisture is lost through the various process and only the micro pores are filled with water, macro pores are half filled with the water and half filled with the air. So, this situation is ideal situation for uptake of plant for the water. So, this is called the available water because maximum portion of this water is uptaken by the plants. So, this is also called capillary water because water in this stage is mainly held by the capillary pores. So, again when various process water is lost through the various process, so amount of water is decreased and one stage comes that is called permanent wilting point and the tension at this stage is 15 bar. So, at this stage plant start to wilt at the day time and night time they can require, but day time they are permanently wilt. So, this is that that is why it is called the permanent wilting point. So, at this stage uh, bar is 15 bar and between field capacity and permanent wilting point the water held is called available water because it is mostly available for the plant growth. Again water is lost through the various process and only the thin layer around the soil water is held and it is held so tightly that plant cannot extract it for its growth. So, uh, this point is called ultimate wilting point at the 60 bar and plant permanently die because they are not able to extract the water so tightly held around the soil particles. So, at this stage plant die this is called ultimate wilting point. Again water is lost and no water is there, but water is there in the form of vapor form only and water um, cannot be uptaken by the plants and this is situation in this situation the water is mainly vapor and since it is not available to plant so it is called unavailable water and at this stage is called hygroscopic coefficient but uh, hygroscopic coefficient is start from 31 bar means after permanent wilting point it starts and up to the 1000 bar it is the hygroscopic coefficient and water between the hygroscopic coefficient and the uh, above the permanent wilting point is called the hygroscopic water and that is also unavailable to the plant. So, these are the different types of water held at different tension in the soil. Now, we should also know the how water is measured because only after measuring the water and available water we can uh, know how much water uh, we have to give through the irrigation. So, there are various process mainly two methods are there quantitative and qualitative. So, through quantitative method we come to know the exact amount of water in the soil, but through the qualitative method we only come to know the tension at which the water is held. So, gravimetric method through which we come to know the quantity of water and it can be calculated through this formula weight of wet soil minus weight of dry soil upon weight of dry soil multiplied by 100. And if we multiply the bulk density by the this formula, it comes the percent on volume basis water in the soil. And if this formula is multiplied with again depth of soil, it gives the water content on the depth basis. Neutron probe is an instrument that is used in the soil and this uh, neutron probe it uh, release the fast neutron in the soil and these fast neutrons in the soil collide with the hydrogen atom of the water and their speed is slowed down. So, this gauge is count the speed of slow down neutron and the number of slow down neutron is directly proportional to amount of water. So, one calibration curve is made by the number of uh, slow down neutron and the water amount and accordingly the moisture content at the soil can be known from the calibration curve with the counts of 
slow neutron. Again is time domain refractometer that also gives the direct uh, quantity of water in percent basis. It uh, works on the dielectric constant and water dielectric constant of water is 20 times higher than the dry soil. So, this uh, probe is inserted in the soil and this uh, meter directly gives the reading of soil moisture in percentage basis. Tensiometer does not give the water in quantity, but uh, it gives the tension at which water is held. So, in this pore one hole is made in the soil and this probe is inserted into the hole and it is tightly closed from the side. So, that soil is close contact with the this probe and then water is inserted in this uh, tube and then tightened through the cap. After inserting the water, here is the cup is the ceramic and water can the come out through this portion to the soil. So, as water comes out from this portion to the soil, the water is reduced from the tube and a vacuum is created in this uh, tube. So, this vacuum is read by the, this vacuum gauge. So, this vacuum gauge gives the tension at which the water is held, but uh, limitation of tensiometer is that it works uh, up to only 0.9 bar of soil moisture, but we know that available water is between 0.3 bar to 15 bar and tensiometer gives only 0.9 bar of soil moisture. So, it can work up to 0.9 bar, but in sandy soil where available moisture is within 1 bar, so it can be used for knowing the available moisture in sandy soil. Gypsum blocks also give the not the quantity, but the uh, tension at which water is held. So, these electrodes are there which are inserted in the soil and it works on the principle that more the resistance the uh, less is water and more the water less is the resistance. So, by inserting this electrode electricity between two electrodes is measured if water is more that resistance is less in which water is less resistance is more. So, is resistance meter read the uh, resistance of soil water and which is calibrated with the soil moisture and moisture content in the soil is known. But uh, one limitation of this block is there that in saline soil even though water is not there, but uh, it shows the less resistance because of presence of salt. So, in salt soil uh, it is not suitable to use. Another method is feel and appearance method. In this method we touch the soil and we press uh, the soil in the fingers and make the ball and, and then we come to know how much water is there. But so, it needs lot of experience only experienced person can judge that how much water should be there. So, it is only experienced person can know and for uh, normal person it is very difficult to know the water content through the feel and appearance method. Now, we can calculate the available soil moisture by this formula actual moisture content in percentage minus moisture content at permanent building point divided by moisture content at field capacity minus moisture content at permanent building point uh, multiplied by 100. If we want to know the available soil moisture in centimeter, then formula is moisture content at field capacity minus moisture content at permanent building point divided by 100 and multiplied by bulk density and depth of soil. Now, we should also know the how water is lost in the soil. So, there are two process one is conveyance loss we know that uh, from the source of water the whole quantity of water is not reached to the field. So, during transportation maximum uh, quantity as much as 50 percent of water release is lost uh, during the transportation through the uh, main channel then field channel and then the uh, to the field. So, this conveyance loss also is there and another loss is evapotranspiration loss of water in vapor form from the soil as well as from the plant body. So, water is uptaken by the plants and the through the whole system ultimately is it, it is lost to the atmosphere. So, this loss is called evapotranspiration loss. So, mainly two losses are there conveyance loss and evapotranspiration loss. Now, after knowing the these parameters we can schedule the irrigation. 
So, irrigation scheduling is plan according to which irrigation water is delivered to the crop at the right time in the right amount with right method. Irrigation schedule tells when to irrigate and how much to irrigate to keep the water in available limit. So, when to irrigate? We know the water is available between field capacity and wilting point. So, we have to start the water when soil moisture depletes up to the 25 to 50 percent in the range. Another method is IBW CP approach. In this method, we give the irrigation at predetermined level of CP value and accordingly we give the water. Another is critical stage in which uh, we know that where plant is critical for the water and these stages are mainly flowering to pod formation. Now, how much water we have to irrigate? It is according to crop water requirement. So, crop water requirement is nothing but consumptive use plus application losses plus water is for special needs. So, uh, there are um, uh, water requirement differs from crop to crop and accordingly we have to give the water. So, different methods are there to irrigated water and it is wild flooding, we give the water in the whole uh, field without control, we make the uh, many small basins and then one by one we fill the water. Then border strip, we make the whole field uh, in the strips and one by one strip we give the irrigation. Then furrow method, we give the irrigation in the furrow and uh, grow the crop on the uh, ridge. And basin, we make the basin around the trees and through the main channel we give the water. And surge, it is furrow, but uh, we uh, not give continuous water and in some point we give water, then stop, then give water like this, we give the water. Subsurface is below the ground, we give the water and uh, make uh, the uh, root zone wet. And sprinkler system through which we give the water uh, through the droplets above the grounds and drip uh, in which we give the water drop by drop in the root zone area. So, there are different methods and different uh, advantage and disadvantage of different methods are there and we have to select the methods according to the value of methods. Drainage also part, so it is the removal of excess water from the agricultural land. So, we also have to take care of excess water in the field for the better management of water. So, uh, for the water use efficiency, uh, we have to give in time fertilizer, we have to plant protect, we have to weed control and integrated crop management. So, in this program, we have discussed water management in three headings, rainwater management, groundwater management and irrigation management. In rainwater management, we have mainly focused on the conservation of rainwater. In groundwater management, we have focused on the quality of groundwater and how to improve the poor quality of water. And in irrigation management, we have discussed right time of irrigation, right method of irrigation and right quantity of irrigation water.